namatu ratana tayasa <coughs> may i pay homage to triple gem the buddha and dhamma and the sangha my respect goes to my parents and my teachers hello and good evening everyone so today is wednesday the 12th of august uh, 2020 and this is Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Centre, Aberdeen, in Scotland. So as usual, I'm here with you tonight. Be friend with you and also sharing. And as you may have noticed that uh, this morning it was a flash flood and a storm, lightning and... Uh, lots of uh, flood in Aberdeen, in Edinburgh, in Glasgow and uh, so many cars damaged and as well as sadly in Stonehaven just down the road the train was off the trail and that caused three people died too. Meanwhile in our center when we were having a chanting this morning after the chanting when we were meditating it was a stormy lightning and a heavy rain you know, and uh, this uh, light was just uh, flashing on and off so we had to switch off all the lights just to keep the uh, no damages in the meanwhile as you may have seen the pictures uh, so one of the houses uh, was damaged badly damaged uh, due to the lightning uh, so it was quite scary uh, and uh, quite uh, wonderful as well but hey ho you know and morning was like a completely monsoon rain and within it one hour later look at the beautiful weather so hot you cannot stay outside uh, it was so hot uh, it was like uh, two days uh, within one day Right, so this is how the weather looked like in uh, Aberdeen. Moments later, it's wonderful, and well, the all the changes. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, I gathered that the first minister has announced that there will be further lockdown uh, continue in Aberdeen, and um, despite of the uh, schools are open in Aberdeen right so this is how it's going on outside of the center and whereas in a center again we been working a few things uh, and uh, we have laid down the walking meditation pathways on the wood right and also uh, putting the plaster boards on and uh, also last night Eros brought some more woods thank you very much for a little helps right? So this is uh, what it is going on tonight, uh, today. In the meanwhile, I was a little bit worried uh, this uh, throughout the day and that I won't be able to come online for the Facebook Live this talk. And uh, obviously, the internet is still not working, and uh, PlusNet is going to send us a new router. So hopefully, in two, two or three days' time, we got. Uh, we will get the router and will fix. So now I'm using this 4G mobile uh, internet and it wasn't working until just half an hour earlier uh, and was lucky. So I'm here now with you. Uh, it's a new technology. When I couldn't go online uh, through the Wi-Fi or 4G and I was a little worried and it reminds me uh, that how we are dependent on this Wi-Fi, you know, internet and this technology. And I presume that um, if it lasts long, then it's like uh, uh, people will be mad uh, that not having any access uh, to the internet. I wonder, you know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, how did we survive? Uh, how did we uh, go on with our lives? Uh, and like uh, 30 years ago, I even didn't know uh, about the mobile phones. 
and we didn't have even the telephones uh, and then no televisions and look at us uh, how much we are you know, dependent on these new technologies so we need to be very very mindful of this uh, new technologies that invading uh, our way of life anyway so this is here and there and just the talk uh, and just the sharing some of the things that uh, come across right and um, this is ongoing talk and that we are focusing on the first discourse of the Buddha and uh, have covered until the second factors of the Eightfold Noble Path and yesterday I was working and uh, talking on so-called Vihingsa or the non-violence concept uh, as the right thought and a violence uh, the thought of a violence or cruelty or killing uh, or uh, these these are all regarded as the wrong thought and obviously these we will get it at all the time uh, and here cruelty violence and uh, harming killing these are all regarded as the violent actions and that's the reason we may see that a non-violence action has been the primal part of the uh, Buddha's teachings and as a result there is no such call war in Buddhism in order to spread its religion or its teachings at all in the in the Buddhist history compared to other religion there are there were so many uh, wars and again all, all the religions uh, is uh, was a part of the uh, war itself whereas in Buddhism there hasn't been any war simply to spread the teachings or spread the uh, religion which is completely different and again we can see the history of the uh, uh, expansion of a Christianity or Islam and uh, whoever doesn't uh, believe uh, in their religions then they were killed uh, and uh, persecute uh, persecute persecutions as well and we have a uh, plenty of uh, histories even here in Scotland in England and just down the road and uh, there's a uh, the Stonehaven, uh, the Donato Castle, there is a special room which was also uh, uh, imprisoned those who were against the teachings uh, like that. But whereas in a Buddhism there hasn't been such a war uh, in order to promote, but wherever Buddhism went, it just uh, non-violently merged into the society and whoever come whoever had a knowledge and a vision and understood the teachings they were able to embrace and practice and gradually take uh, took the root in those countries so that's why buddhism is very adaptable and also very flexible in every societies and every uh, countries because it doesn't impose to anyone and it doesn't uh, force to anyone and um, all the Buddha's advice to the Buddhist monk or a missionary monks again is simply said that open the lead for them or basically present the teachings and up to them or up to the listeners or up to those who have a faith and a confidence to decide whether they want to change or convert uh, or believe or follow the teachings of the Buddha or not it is not the duty of a Buddhist monk or a missionary monks to convert anyone uh, and that's the reason why a you know, non-violence approach has been a uh, primal part of the Buddha's teachings uh, and um, it doesn't matter where and how all uh, the practice of the Buddha's teachings it should be you know introduced yeah and not just the introduction but also we have to practice 
you know, and practice and show them how uh, the, the teachings helps. And that's why uh, the non-violence, so-called avihingsa, has been the, uh, the, the right thought in Buddha's teachings. And this right, you know, avihingsa or the non-violence is basically the practice of a compassion. Yeah, practice of a compassion. Yeah? And you may have uh, heard uh, the uh, Mahatma Gandhi who fought or who uh, fought for the uh, independent of India and uh, who, who also followed uh, the Avihingsa, uh, sorry, Ahingsa non violence approach. In regards to the how greatest Mahatma Gandhi was, you know, some would disagree with his approach and some would disagree with how he dealt uh, in Indian history uh, and um, uh, how he continued the caste system and tried to maintain the caste system and, uh, you know, and uh, untouchables were still regarded as untouchables or trying not to give any rights. Uh, and then uh, somehow like that. So politically, uh, political history in, uh, in, in India during the Mahatma Gandhi uh, was not as we think Mahatma Gandhi is the great uh, when we look at the, uh, the histories. But anyway, this is not our point. But the point is he also took the non-violence approach uh, towards the independent of India. Uh -huh. So like that. Yeah. So uh, this non-violence uh, is a practice of a compassion. Yeah. And uh, we may have known or I believe everyone knows uh, Dalai Lama, uh, yeah, the, the leader of uh, uh, Tibetan Buddhism and as well as, as, well as the king of uh, Tibet. And although uh, he lost the country for over the half a century, uh, to the Chinese government and um, and still he or all the Ch Tibetan Tibetans are out of the um, their country and hasn't got the country back yet but despite of that Dalai Lama said that uh, he never harbored any you know, uh, ill will or any uh, thought of violence against the Chinese government or China at all Similarly, there are plenty of stories uh, of monks and the nuns or even Tibetans were tortured uh, badly in uh, prisons uh, and in, in Tibet or in China. You know? And uh, the, the Dalai Lama's instruction to all of them simply was do not uh, retaliate or do not be violent, you know? uh, practice compassion. Uh, and then uh, there are many stories uh, from the nuns and the monks that the more the Tibetans were, or the more they were tortured, they uh, thought of themselves of more compassion uh, needed to practice. Yeah. So that sort of a compassion that uh, Buddha was talking about, and we have to develop that kind of compassion. And basically, then again, the compassion is not just towards others, but also ourselves too. And particularly today in Thailand, and this is a new, uh, sorry, this is the Mother's Day, uh, 12th of uh, August is a Mother's Day in Thailand. Uh, basically, the, and the birthday of the queen, the previous queen. It's called uh, Queen Mother. Right? Her birthday become uh, the mother's uh, day on this occasion you now and people will just go to the centers and temples and do the the uh, uh, meritorious deeds uh, towards uh, someone uh, the, the the mothers who had uh, who have who has lost their mothers and then those who has got the mother they will just visit and pay respect so since I yesterday I talked about the uh, uh, the compassion and self compassion, I got the message asking that what if that parents were very bad and they bullied uh, when you were young, 
should we still practice compassion? And that was the one question. And the second one was that, uh, what about uh, the uh, children, those who are behaving badly? Yeah, the, the parents should practice compassion towards them or not, right? So uh, in terms of uh, uh, parents, uh, I remember you know, a few years ago when I was in Wolverhampton at that time, one of the gentlemen asked me about this same question too because he was really bullied when he was very young. Uh, he came from Punjab uh, and when he was young he was bullied, he was tortured, he was punished and as a result he always felt that uh, uh, bu uh, bullies and uh, emotionally damaged and then one day I was uh, talking about the uh, the importance of a parent and how they have uh, done to us and then he wasn't happy with that uh, and uh, how we should pay repay the parent and he was completely against and then he just pour and pour of anger and the hate of the mother and the father so in that case you know uh, my response was that if you know, and they hate it so much then they would not uh, give birth to us and then after they have given birth again they still love us you know and they take care of us they took took uh, took uh, all the uh, measures you know and um, you know, brought us up and then you know, th most of the parents you know, uh, although they are bad uh, you know behavior are not good like you know, taking uh, drugs you know, and uh, smoking, but they do not want their children to follow that path. You know, try. You know, they all they, all the parents wish their children get a good education and you know, get a good uh, uh, comfort life, and that's the reason why they have been you know, working so hard. So in that case, you know, when I was talking to him, I questioned back that. What happened after he was born and you know, did they uh, abandon? Uh, he said no. What happened after you know you were just growing up and did they abandon? Did they hurt you? And no. And then gradually after I questioned one after another, he understood that the hate or the, uh, the bullies simply it was because of the family problem and just uh, uh, parents needed somewhere to uh, you know, put their anger and that's how children came but after i discussed with him uh, gradually he understood that despite they have uh, uh, shown this anger and hate and bullied but um, they were always concerned about their, uh, their his health and as well as um, uh, his future which caused, you know, which also uh, the result why he was managed, he managed to come to the UK and established. And later on, I believe that uh, he went back to India and uh, asked for forgiveness for such a long history of uh, hate. So that's why we have to think in this way too, uh, seeing their, their uh, background and uh, you know, seeing how much they have done to us so that is one thing and I remember there is another uh, in incident here in Aberdeen that one Thai uh, lady was visiting and uh, I was teaching loving kindness meditation by thinking of uh, their mother and how great their work is uh, how much they spend time uh, and uh, thanking with the feeling of a heart. Then uh, suddenly after the loving kindness meditation ended, she cried out loud. And, uh, and after that, after the end of the uh, meditation, she wanted to talk to me individually and in private. And she mentioned uh, that she had been harboring uh, the hate towards mother for such a long time and now practicing this loving kindness meditation helped her to release 
and it, the C expressed that it's like you are taking out the huge mountain of the shoulder yeah so that is how you know it's uh, important uh, that we do have to you know uh, uh, practice the compassion towards uh, our parents despite how badly they have behaved uh, or uh, they have uh, done something towards us that caused anger but end of the day you know we should appreciate that they have brought us in this world although we have come to this world because of our own karma but without their help we would not be able to be born in this life so it's always indebted uh -huh. there is a story in a call uh, suwana sama jataka and a, 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 a man or a boy or if you take them you know in each soldiers uh, father and mother to uh, take in your in the uh, soldiers and then uh, travel for all year or until their death still you haven't paid uh, their uh, gratitude until you have put them into the right path where it leads to the liberation so that sort of uh, uh, compassion we still have to uh, generate towards uh, our parents and the second question was how should we practice compassion towards our children who are behaving badly again we have to look at their behaviors and their cons you know their attitude and uh, sometimes we may have to you uh, know put some barriers and we may have to hit and just to uh, put uh, them into the right path and this is like uh, you know buddha used the simile of a a, a craftsman who is making the uh, clay pots uh, he will hit from outside and inside both to make this pot come into the right shape in the right way and then you can use it for pro in a proper way so as a child you know he is still very young and he doesn't know or she doesn't know what is good what is wrong and it's a parent's duty uh, to put them into the right way you know? so you may have to put the measures of a boundaries and aims and objectives and then telling them what is right and what is not right and again a research has shown that parents who mourn about their children a lot all the children be successful in their life later lifetime okay and then meanwhile and this is not just that but also we have to be friend with the, our own children and then sometimes you may have to play with them other time you may have to behave like the parents uh, and then show the respect uh, and let them respect who you are but in the meantime you need to be open-minded uh, and then be open to them as well so they can feel comfortable and you know, with this you, know, you have to share uh, or practice such a compassionate uh, act towards them too yeah? so these are the two uh, uh, ways of uh, dealing with uh, uh, this um, parents and uh, uh, children but obviously it is not just the uh, parents and the children that we should be in you know, a practicing compassion or compassion towards them but also to anyone you know and understanding that uh, cruelty or violence towards them they would also feel pain you know? so the karuna in uh, for about uh, brahma vihara practice uh, clearly said uh, that normally we or people you know become a cruel or a violent to another beings or another people simply because of the wealth or because of the anger or because of the name and a fame yeah? to gain the wealth to gain the name to gain the prosperity uh, to gain the uh, famous yeah? so 
we have to be very careful with that once we can come out from it basically you know we will not be committing any violence or cruelty towards anyone else it, it gives more compassionate mind and kindness mind yeah? and that also stimulates the the research has shown that stimulates the one kind of a hormones in our brain and that <clears throat> helps to uh, what's called uh, that helps to anti-aging and as well as more positive uh, positive uh, thoughts and thinking which again gives more opportunity to have a, a good life uh, until we finish or we, we uh, end of our lifetime in this life <clears throat> so that's why and the practice of a compassion is not just to others but also towards ourselves too eh? and that's always helpful to us and as i said yesterday you know a practice of a compassion is basically you know although we think of helping others but that is helping ourselves you know and helping ourselves is basically helping others uh, and that sort of a, a compassion we a compassionate heart we have to develop there is a story that one uh, novice monk uh, who was uh, staying in a temple and uh, practicing in a temple and uh, his master somehow realized his future that within seven days uh, this novice is going to die uh, because his life spam is such so his master told him to go back and stay with their mother with his mother and father <coughs> with his parents so then to see them as a last sight so on the way to his house he saw uh, some ants were stuck in the water and uh, the water level was growing and with that the ants may die and out of uh, compassion this little boy had uh, towards these ants he saved by using his cloth his rope and he went back to home and after a week later he comes back to the temple and said <coughs> went to the, his master and uh, paid respect and his master was surprised to see his own children you know, a novice monk who he thought that would die, have died uh, in his family in his family home and then with seeing his uh, coming back and staying in a temple he investigated that what he had done on the way or what he had done while he was living with his family and he found that saving these animals saved his life uh -huh. so like that so that's why you know helping others is helping us and as well as uh, self-compassion is helping ourselves, also helping others and which we can see that when we are in the right place no one needs to worry about it's like a children who is well grown well established parents will worry about them less whereas someone uh, parents who is you uh, know not uh, established and not well then parents will worry about them a lot okay? so that's the same thing uh, when you are established they are also feeling safe and happy and they are also well um, but other way around is not so the compassion is the antidote for the violent and this is the and a third a right thought within this second factors of eightfold noble path so i end here for tonight sir uh, on this um, non-violence or a compassionate a compassion practice with this may you all be well and happy take care of yourself be safe and may the buddha dhamma sangha bless you uh, in a few minutes time we will have an evening chanting and practice of a meditation you're most welcome to join with us until then good night and thank you see you shortly Sato.